I think one of the main reasons that I'm pretty behind schedule is because I'm spending a lot of thought energy trying to program well. When in reality, I should just be ooga booga caveman writing gameplay code and shitting this out and then tidying up afterwards once there's actually a game here. Um, which I kind of just noticed because I spent the last like one and a half hours trying to do this neat little, this cool trick, this cool fancy nice rework. I set out today to do tethers. I think, yeah, this, this is literally the first thing I dragged across this morning from memory. And I've barely done it. <laughs> Seven hours today so far. And a lot of that has just been um, trying to think about how to do this algorithm really nicely and cleanly and structure all the data properly and blah, blah, blah. Instead of just writing it and getting it working and then cleaning up afterwards, um, which is good and bad. It's like I'm constantly trying to juggle game jam vibes of let's get this done as quickly as possible and ship it out with all right, long term. How can I make it easier for my future self to write this same kind of code? And it's a delicate dance because you can't go full Ooga Booga Caveman mode because then I may as well be using Unity, right? <laughs> and I can't go full let's engi engineer the shit out of this because then I will never ship games. So it's a fine line. I guess that's, uh, that's what I'm here to learn. And I'm going to keep on learning that. Alright, so I've noticed I'm doing way, way too much kind of like preemptive. What if the player does this? How do I prevent this? Blah, 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 right? Where that might, that might not even come up in playtesting. So why am I worrying about it? It's, I'm hyper fixating on issues that I don't really need to be solving. When in reality, I just need to do the next biggest thing in front of me, which is this win state, right? I just hyper fixated on like this one thing. It's like, oh, right, what if the player goes to is connected to the world battery, but it's not like a 1.0 efficiency rating yet. So what happens if they try and overcharge on that? Nothing will happen. So how do I communicate that to the player? And it's like, it's like, bro, come on. Why don't I just focus on the core things that actually matter? I've noticed that as the day goes on and the more tired I get, the more I kind of like flip into this state of hyper fixating on one kind of thing. That's why it's so good in the morning when I wake up, you got a fresh mind and you can just like see the really important stuff that matters, grab it, work on it. But it's also good kind of like catching myself in moments like these where I can go in, take a step back and be like, all right, well, this is the most important thing. I need to go do this now, right? Trying to preemptively do all this shit before playtesting, like this might not even be the issue. The big issue that the player is facing might be how the fuck do I even do anything to begin with, right? So. I need to stop hyperfixating on little details like that. I think I may have fucked up a bit. So I've just gone and designed out a whole map, right? Starting area, this is where you're trying to get to. Bunch of stuff around, right? But I've been playtesting it just now, right? And it doesn't feel fun anymore. And here's what I think I've just done is A, made the game too complicated, B, split the goals. It was more fun when I was playtesting a few days ago when the only mechanic was survive. I think I've spread the gameplay a bit too thin. I think what I should have done was definitely just double down on the this mechanic over here. Survive, make sure you don't run out of battery and like you're constantly just on the edge. Because uh, I think I've watered it down too much now. I don't know exactly what I've done wrong but I've just done too much shit and now it's scattered. I over-engineered the gameplay. That's probably the best way of putting it. I over-engineered the gameplay. Lesson learned, I guess. Do not dilute what you already have, unless you know it's something else that's also really good. I'm kind of shitting myself. <laughs> For the last, like, two hours, I've just been sitting here, procrastinating, packaging up the game. Uh, and building it and zipping it up and sending it to people. I've just been sitting here like, maybe we just kind of call it a day here, you know? <laughs> maybe I'm just not cut out to be a game developer. <laughs> because it's like, to actually package this up and send it out to someone, I've got to acknowledge the fact that it's it's not going to be this perfect game, right? It's going to be this imperfect, clunky experience that I'm going to give to people. And that's okay. And so I'm kind of like wrestling with that right now. Like my biggest kind of like thing that's going on in my mind right now, it's mainly just, well, what if this is a shit game? What if it isn't fun at all? It's cool for about two seconds and then people get bored, right? Which is a very real possibility. If that happens, it's like, okay, well, 
how can I make this less boring, right? And then just like take what I want and move on to the next project. Rinse and repeat that until I've, I'm not making boring games, right? It's still kind of scary to like take something that I've been working on for ages and be like, hey, here you go. Imagine it'd be a whole lot more horrifying if you're doing that for like two years and then you're like, well, here's the game now. That would suck, bro. Like working on a game for seven years, you have no idea. And then you, you release it and it's like just shit. That's why uh, shipping small gamers first is a better idea. <laughs> Either way, I think the only solution at this point is to stop making game and just put it in front of people and see how they play it and then go from there, I guess. I can, uh, it just sucks, dude. It sucks putting a game in the hands. Like I've been working on this for like almost two weeks now and to actually take something this sloppy and put it in someone else's hands like it feels it feels criminal almost <laughs> but i think it just needs to be done Fuck. game dev to its finest indeed can't do much else except move on to point testing and see what happens rather release it and get feedback one adapt etc than keep mulling over the possible bad points in your head and having that paralyze you exactly three days ago i had a solid game right which is pretty much exactly what i'm about to ship people i was like you know what what if, what if this happens or what if this happens or what if I can make it better by doing this, right? And instead of like just shipping what I had right there, I tried to do more. And then I actually made the game worse. It's best to just fucking get it out the door. If you get it into the hands of people then. Because it's like, how are you going to know what to do next until you put it into the hands of someone else who's never played it before, right? You, you're just guessing, right? I don't want to do that. So I guess... What a fucking work to do. <laughs> Thank you though, my man. No worries. Boys, boys, boys. That is a lot of fun. But it has brought to light some massive issues with the game, which is why playtesting is very important and fun, and it needs to be done. Can't ship out of wilds without first shipping Terrachroma. <laughs> Terrachroma. <laughs> Words of wisdom. <laughs> Alright, thanks for the pep talk, homie. Later. Whatever I've got, it needs to be shipped. I don't know what I was expecting really what. I was gonna make my first game as oh, fucking absolute masterpiece. Game of the year. 10 out of 10 IGN. <laughs> That's not how this whole learning thing works. <laughs> you always hear the advice of, yeah, you've just gotta get out there and fail a shit ton of times, right? You've gotta go through the montage cutscene of just eating shit over and over again. You can't just skip to being good. I don't know why I thought this would be any different. Alright, 10 minutes of moping time is up. We've got to get back to work and actually ship this fucking game. Ain't nothing going to come from me sitting here bitching. Let's get to work. You feel like you've unlocked the potential to make anything you want now? Fuck no. <laughs> no? Bro, I am... This next game, I'm going to downscope the shit out of things and focus on like something even simpler than what I have here, just so I can like actually do a proper polishing and playtesting phase. Because I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm playtesting now, but it's like the last day. I also need to like a line render and telescope would really be ideal. <laughs> so I think I'll work on that and just figure out a way of getting shaders done. So I think the next game's probably going to be a lot less gamey and more techy. A mistake that you made in this one was trying to implement two different uh like primary mechanics and then you had yeah. to scrap one and you spent like what days on the other one that was that was one of them and then before that i just overscoped so hard it was like oh it's gonna be this cool survival and it's like procedural generation and like you're gonna go out and explore and it's gonna be tethers and like all this kind of shit you have a taste now for like what real like what any software project goes through and probably especially games where it's like people come up with all these ideas and like, we're going to do this. We're going to make the, like, we're going to add in these features, like all this shit. And then by the end, they're like, yo, we have to ship, like cut all that shit. <laughs> yeah. And then like what you actually get is like, is like probably like half of the game that they originally wanted to make. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But a lot of times that's all you need. This is a perfect a representation of uh, how this game has turned out. Welcome to Jurassic Park.
Mom, can I get Don't Starve? <laughs> no, we have Don't Starve at home. Don't cold. <laughs> Although I noticed with this project that the um, like spring out of bed energy died as soon as I hit play testing and like as soon as I started really struggling with the gameplay, um, like and like. As soon as I realized that I had to cut a bunch of stuff and hone in on something specific, um, the like spring out of bed, I'm really excited to get working on this and finish this off vibe was gone. Sure. And it was more of like, I just want to get this over and done with so I can move on to the next thing. But I think that's just how it works with projects, right? And you can't just like give up as soon as the motivation of like that big be that beginning kind of motivation phase you know you just gotta fucking power through it and see through otherwise you just keep stopping there and moving on to the next thing and then as soon as yeah. you lose motivation you just do it all over again right exactly that's where a lot of people probably stop is when they they realize that like some core mechanic of their game is like really bad uh, and then they don't know what to do, and then it just demotivates them to mm. quit. Yeah, like, this shit is messy. So fucking messy. My god. Like, the amount of absolute sheer cluelessness coupled with existential dread of... Man, do I, do, do I really want to be a game developer? You know, like, this, <laughs> this is actually hot as fuck. <laughs> but, in the end... Having something concrete, still good, still good. Even though I never want to fucking see this project ever again. <laughs> yeah, it's that's 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 literally what it is. It's like peak on top of the world. I'm absolutely crushing this. This is fucking amazing. Springing out of bed in the morning, like yo, I'm gonna fucking tackle the day, right? Coupled with like just kind of sitting there going, uh. Yeah, see, now I think in my, I know, I'm pretty sure I know the reason that, uh, for, the reason for both of those moods, uh, what do you think the reason is before I, I tell you? I think, uh, they have to exist. Like, you can't be constantly happy all the time and, like, in this pure kind of ecstasy of I'm absolutely crushing it and know what I'm doing and I'm gonna finish this, right? And like, this is exactly what I want to be working on, right? Um, because if you had that all the time, then it wouldn't be that. It would just be normal kind of baseline. Like, we need the lows to appreciate the highs as cliche and fucking... As cliche as that sounds. <laughs> right. But do you know what... Do you know, like, the thing in the game that caused you to feel both of these, like... Like, it... Why did you feel like excited to get out of bed and work on the project? And then why did you feel like you couldn't work on the project the next day? Like what changed there? Like uh, besides, it was the moment that I realized I had to cut all of my. I had to. Yeah, it was it was the moment that this kind of like perfect ideal game in my mind. I had to cut a lot of that and focus on this concrete thing um, and try and make it fun. Like, like that was yeah. the moment. Um, like, essentially, I had to sacrifice my vision of what the game could be, and that was the moment where I kind of started stalling a bit, I guess. So before, you had, you basically knew exactly what you were working on. You knew what you were making, mm. right? And then you realized that you had to remove this thing. And then at that point, you didn't know what you were making at that point. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So you go, you went from having like, uh, like work lined up to do to not having any work and like basically hitting a wall. That's pretty much it. Yeah. And then I was like, all right, brainstorming time back to the drone board. Yeah. What can I do in this limited amount of time that I have left? Um, and try my best to make something that's fun and playable, right? Yeah, that's the thing. That is the key thing that, like, 
uh, I've seen so many people like that's the roadblock that they hit and that's where they stop is when they like like when you start a project you know what you want to make like you're like all right I have all this stuff that I want to make right now uh, but then the second that you run out of that stuff or you realize it's not good you don't know what like where to go from there like you have no work like to actually do and so instead of sitting down to brainstorm because that's hard they just give up yeah pretty much so like it's like a good thing to like realize like when you're like uh when you don't want to get out of bed and immediately start working it's because you don't know what you need to be doing next that is yeah no <clears throat> that is actually spot on that's exactly how i felt this morning like this morning was the hardest day uh because at the start of the day i um pretty sure i had a completely different game again <laughs> Well, maybe it was like the end of yesterday. Yeah, it was. It was. It was like the end of yesterday, where I just kind of like did a round of play testing, and realized that oh shit, I'm gonna have to redo a lot of stuff. Um, and then I woke up this morning with like a vague idea of you know I've got to finish a game and wrap this up and do something here, but I didn't specifically know what to do. But once yeah. I sat down and got working, yeah, I just fucking flew through it. There you go. That state of like, you know, like, fuck, like, I don't know what to do now. Like, I, fuck, I like, the game has to change. Like, it's really bad. It's like, fuck. Dude, I've hit that so many times in my game. Yeah. It seems like it's every week. <laughs> I'm actually very proud of myself for finishing that. Holy shit. Even though it is absolutely nothing like what I thought it would be when I first started out, like the thing that I had in my mind, it is so far from that. But it is actually playable. It's a reality. It's a game you can go and download right now. And uh, it's the first project of many. <laughs>